Stash those dice, lose the pencils, and let the DM play for once. It's D&D, but with cards. That's right, we're learning Dragonfire from Catalyst Game Labs. This cooperative deck builder pits two to six adventures against the dangerous dungeons generated by the game itself. Each player begins with their character screen, displaying their starting hand size, hit points, and gold. The equipment pack line lists the starting cards in each character's base deck. The symbols listed represent the basic cards a player begins with, marked by their class symbol. Arcane in blue, Martial in black, Devotion in green, and Deception in red. These four symbols also correspond to the classic character archetypes available in the base game. You got your fighter, your cleric, your wizard, and your rogue. We're setting up for a four-player game here, and there's some slight variation for the other player numbers, so consult that rulebook. Once players have acquired their basic equipment packs, that's your starting deck, each is going to take a character marker and place it on the Adventure Environment card. The market deck, consisting of cards players can buy in the game to increase their deck, goes center and six market cards are revealed face up. Make a bunch of pools down there for all the tokens, you know how that goes. One player must be designated the party leader and they take the Dragonfire token and the Dragonfire deck. During the game, the Dragonfire deck represents the growing danger of adventuring and makes the game progressively harder. Each game of Dragonfire consists of one adventure of your choosing, divided into scenes, and each scene divided into rounds. The adventure card dictates the setup for the game and may have special rules for certain encounters. The encounter decks are listed here too, which determine which monsters and challenges the party will face during the game. Build the primary and secondary encounter decks and place them near the party leader. The adventure lists how many encounters to reveal at the beginning of each scene. There's a specific order for revealing encounters. First, reveal encounters from the secondary deck based on the Dragonfire level. This level is equal to the number of cards in the Dragonfire discard, and generally that starts at zero, so we skip that for now. Then reveal more encounters based on the adventure from the primary deck. The first encounter revealed is placed in front of a player whose class matches the encounter's color. Each encounter thereafter is placed sequentially to the left, regardless of the class type. Once all encounters are revealed, the party leader reveals the first Dragonfire card from the deck and applies the effects, if any, to the scene. Each time the party leader's turn is about to begin, the Dragonfire card revealed is discarded and a new one is drawn. As the discard pile grows, so does the Dragonfire level, increasing the potency of select cards from the deck. Some Dragonfire cards have the Deadfall icon, which is an effect that triggers once it's discarded. Now that we've set up scene one, we can begin the first round. Each round consists of every player taking a turn, and rounds repeat until all the encounters facing the players have been defeated, ending the scene. Turn gameplay is split into seven nail-biting phases. Start turn, play cards, deal damage, take damage, replenish, market, in turn. During the start turn, in this order, players resolve Dragonfire card abilities, move characters, and resolve other global effects. Movement from the adventure environment can happen if a location encounter had been drawn and placed in front of a player. These special encounters pull their target into their location and split the party. Once the start turn is finished, players play cards from their hands to deal with the various encounters on the table. Played cards contain damage in the top left, gold costs for purchasing from the market on the top right, a class type, and card abilities. Some cards have assist abilities, which can only be used during another player's turn to help with the encounters. There's a variety of keywords that either take effect immediately or during the damage phase, but thankfully there's a handy glossary on page 28 of the rulebook for all of those. Two common abilities include skill checks and saves. Skill checks are for players and saves are for encounters. If a player is forced to make a skill check, they reveal the top card on their deck, and if its color matches their character class, the check passes and the ability trigger takes effect. The same applies to the encounter with their encounter decks. Some cards may list skill check plus one or save plus two. This means additional cards equal to that number are drawn and any successes pass. Once cards have been played and their abilities have been resolved, it's time to deal damage. 
Starting with an encounter of the active player's choosing, apply damage to the damage track of the encounter, located on the right side of the card. Damage icons on the top left of player cards are pooled and assigned to the levels of the damage track, starting from the top down. Any type of damage can be applied to colorless icon levels, but colored icons require that damage type to clear. Levels on the damage track must be cleared from top to bottom, and partial damage dealt to a level is removed at the end of each player's turn. However, when a level is cleared, it's cleared for all players, so it's possible to defeat encounters over several turns. If any encounter's damage track is completely cleared, it is defeated! Along with any abilities that card triggers when it's vanquished, players collect gold equal to the gold icon on the encounter card. Starting with the active player and passing to the left, everyone takes one gold at a time until the value is reached. At the end of the deal damage phase, all cards played and defeated encounters are placed into their respective discard piles. Duh. Next, players take damage from the cards facing them. Encounters have an attack strength listed on their bottom right, which deal damage to a player's hit points. If a player reaches zero HP, they become stunned. If it's their turn, the stunned player shuffles their hand, discard, and draw deck into a new draw deck. The character also becomes exhausted and takes an exhausted token. Stunned players lose their market phase, and any player cards that have a remain in play effect are also discarded. But here's the good thing, any amount of healing removes the stun condition, but not the exhausted token, and the player may immediately draw two cards. However, if a stunned character takes further damage, or if a player again becomes stunned while they have an exhausted token, they become unconscious. Unconscious characters are out of the game for the remainder of the scene, and can only return when the party defeats all the encounters to progress to the next scene. All encounters facing an unconscious character immediately rotate to the left, piling on the rest of the party. After players have taken damage, the replenish phase allows players with three or fewer cards to draw two cards. If they have four or more, they don't draw, but there's no maximum hand size. During the market phase, players can purchase any number of cards from the market provided they have the gold. After a card is purchased, the empty slot is filled with a new card from the market deck. If no cards are purchased, the active player must replace one of the existing market cards, cycling the market for other players. Unlike most deck builders, market cards purchased in Dragonfire immediately go into your hand, not the discard. Woohoo! Finally, in the end turn, players determine whether all the encounters were defeated. If not, the next player starts their turn and the process repeats. If the encounters are slain, then the scene is completed and players proceed to a short rest. Short rests occur between the end of a scene and the next player's turn. Any exhaustion tokens are removed. Each character heals one hit point but cannot heal past their max HP, of course. And players can each purchase one card from the market. Don't cycle the market this time if a player doesn't purchase a card. Additionally, when a scene ends, the Dragonfire card is buried in the deck, which means put it at the bottom, not discarded. This doesn't add to your Dragonfire level. Once all the scenes in an adventure are completed, the party wins. Dragonfire also includes an experience point system for leveling up your characters, adding new features and magical items so you can carry these through various adventures, creating your own Dragonfire campaign. And that's Dragonfire. You can watch me play this game live and other sweet, sweet games at twitch.tv slash geekandsundry or projectalpha.com. Keep playing games.